Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Today we're doing the A Spring Hill in My Step scenario. And uh, it's a slightly longer scenario than the previous one. Looks like we're going to be taking the exact same path in reverse. Uh, now, of course, they could decide to put us up through the Mary Hill line, but I have a feeling we're going to stay on the same main line here because we can't really get to the Mary Hill line. So forget I suggested that. We're going to be going through uh, all the stations past Partick where we started last time. We're going to go a few more stations uh, through the uh, most likely through Annie's Land uh, and onwards onto the branch line to Milngavie. So we're going to have about five extra stops. Uh, being about 18, 19, 20 stations somewhere in this range, I'm curious whether it will be a full set of stops or whether we're going to have a um, limited stops type service. Let's get started. Let's see what we have here. Welcome to the weekend service from Edinburgh Waverley to Milngavie. Today you are picking this train up at Airdrie and taking some weekend shoppers into central Glasgow and beyond. Open the doors and allow for passengers to board for a 1027 departure. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to bring the hut up. We're going to open the doors. Last time I tried to do that, I got an out of memory error. Don't ask me why. Uh, we're going to turn the headlights on. We're going to get the AWS self-test done. Everything here is going to be ready to go. And we have a train coming in ahead of us here. We have to wait for this train before we're allowed to go. This is part of why we don't leave till 1027, because we have to wait for this train. But the signal will turn green before we actually have to go. So all we can do at this point is wait for this train to come in. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. Leaving Airdrie, getting the same messages as last time, by the way. Our first stop today is Coke Bridge Sunnyside. We're going to be skipping Coat Dyke. By the way, the train coming in was service 2E542, or coming from Ballock to uh, Airdrie. Went by a singer, not that we care about that. Uh, we're going to be coming upon the first AI train of our journey, uh, 2H46, as it comes into Coat Dyke to make a station stop. Beyond Coat Dyke, I am expecting some lag, and I also have a bit of a tale to tell you about uh, the problems in getting this video recorded, which you're going to probably enjoy. So uh, stay with me, and I'll uh, talk about that with you in a moment. So we do have a 25 speed limit through Coat Bridge Sunnyside. We have to keep that in mind. It's easy to forget when you're just getting started on a scenario that you have to hit the brakes immediately. Here's 2H46. I am now expecting some lag, so I'm keeping the speed down a little bit, and I have to lower the speed anyway. So I am expecting some lag now. It did happen, like the setting sun. I did, have, I did have one run where it didn't. I don't know how that happened, but um, more often than not, it seems to happen. So we have a minute and a half to make our stop. I'm not concerned right now about the timing as long as I get the brakes down where I need to be. That'll do. Well, at least we have a green signal ahead, right? 
At least one thing's going right. And there we are, arrival at Coke Bridge Sunnyside platform number one. Leaving Coke Bridge Sunnyside, we're going to skip several stops. Our next stop is at Shettleston. Trying to get up to 25 miles per hour, we're going to eventually hit a 60 speed limit that we're going to be able to use for a while, and I'm happy about that. So while we get ourselves up to speed here, let's uh, talk about what happened last night. As I was recording this, in the middle of recording, uh, a transformer blew somewhere, and the power to our neighborhood went out. I noticed a flickering light above me for uh, a couple times. I didn't think anything of it. I thought maybe the light bulb was going. But no, it was a loss of a power supply. And uh, eventually the power drained and everything went out. So I didn't uh, get the hint. I didn't shut my computer down. I kept right on doggedly recording because I needed to get my video done. And, uh, well, I got cut off in the middle. So, um, yeah, I'm redoing it now. Uh, because when I tried to use that video in editing this all together, uh, because I did the other half of the scenario when the power came back on, when I tried to do everything uh, in the editor, the video feed that was cut off from the power outage refused to load in the editor. And I have no explicable reason as to why that video will not load in the editor. This is Blair Hill, by the way. So I don't know why that video will not load. It just will not load. And I'm a little baffled by it because the one i did later loads fine i tried three times i had to quit the editor all three times because it was not responding properly so something was wrong with that uh video in the editor for some reason i don't know why that train by the way is number 2m30 also heading to edinburgh waverly so today i am literally uh re-recording this i'm supposed to have this published today uh, and it's going to be a very late video. It might not even show up until Sunday for some people because it's taking me a while to get this back up. I'm having, I had a game issue with the, uh, an out of memory when I tried to open the doors at one point. And you can see I'm still having game lag. There's nothing I can do about that. That's going to happen. Um, I didn't have this much game lag previously, so I don't know why I'm having it now. But it does happen. Maybe I should have played this route in 32-bit. Who knows? I don't know. So yeah, I'm dealing with the uh, trying to rush to get this video out. There might be some comments that I made in the later video because I haven't reviewed that video yet. There might be comments I made in that video that might not mesh with comments in this part of the video you're going to be able to tell their different segments uh obviously i'm going to um probably not be saying much about the fact that uh i'm doing two separate videos because i didn't know at the time i was going to be doing two separate videos uh and meshing together so things like that happen in the editing process a lot of places keep them quiet uh but talk about them in passing i'm telling you up front this video is going to possibly have some inconsistencies in it it will it might happen don't worry about it I'm not going to bother tool tipping anything I'm just, or subtitling anything. If there's an inconsistency, just know ahead of time that there might be an inconsistency. Uh, one that is probably going to be uh, easy to point out is that I'm probably not going to do the 75-minute scenario right now, but I decided already that doing the 75-minute scenario for Tuesday would probably, which by now will be an editing nightmare because I need to be out somewhere. I was supposed to be out today. It's not going to happen because of the same reason that my transformer blew um power went out because of a snowstorm uh and apparently thunder snow apparently was taking place here which is interesting um yeah so for that reason i'm pretty much not expecting to get that video done um this is easter house 
So I'm probably going to be doing the uh, freight scenario on Tuesday, assuming I have time to get that done. If I end up not having time to get that done, there might not be a video on Tuesday. Be aware in advance, there might not be a video on Tuesday. But I will try to get it done. Sometimes the best laid plans will uh, rot without you trying. This is why I need to get stuff taped ahead again. I just haven't had time to really get everything taped ahead, which is really uh, bothering me from the perspective of the channel. I need to really put four or five hours aside just to play and get a few videos done so I can just edit them while I do my other activities. Let them record and do what they need to do. This is Garrow Hill. As you can imagine, freight videos are also the easiest to edit because I'm very often not going to be looking for side views at stations. I don't have to stop everywhere. Once in a while there's a stop in a freight scenario, I will take a look at the train from above when I'm at that stop, but most of the time it's just drive straight through. Maybe get a camera shot at a station and that's it. Um, so I might have to do some freight scenarios and edit those. Might be time to introduce that Class 67 before I do Class 67 here, you know what I mean? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Might also be a good time to play those Armstrong Powerhouse scenarios. I, I know the HHA pack has some scenarios. I actually tried it once, uh, but I scrubbed the recording for it because quality issues. Um, this was a year ago, too, by the way, that I scrubbed it. So I'm going to have to go back and play it now. Um, and get it. It's a Class 66 scenario using the using his Class 66 pack, obviously. Uh, hour and a half, I think it is. Something like that. Or an hour and 20 minutes. I'm not sure the exact length. But you have a half hour of train spotting while you're in that scenario. So, very, very interesting uh, way that it's laid out. And that's how freight, scenario, freight situations sometimes work. I'm bringing the speed down quite a bit because we are going to be uh, coming into the platform a little too fast, first of all. But we're also coming in very early. So I want to get that speed down with a full service application for a moment. I do not want to stop right there. A little more, a little more, please. A little more. That'll do. Arrival at Shettleston platform number one. Leaving Shettleston, our next stop is Carntine. We had a bit of a wait there, so I cut out uh, a lot of that wait for you. Just got a couple nice shots. By the way, that grocery store we're going by, I meant to show you, but it's called Freshco. Uh, this was an attempt, I think, to avoid any name uh, copyright issues, but it turns out in North America, we actually have a store called Freshco. So, um, yeah, I know they're not copying that store, obviously, but uh, just a little tidbit of fact that I thought would be interesting to throw out. Freshco is actually a store. We have a full minute to make our stop at Carantine, so I am bringing the brakes on a little earlier than usual here. I'm coming in around the speed I want to at this point, which is fine. I'm actually slightly slower than that, but that means I can leave a level one brake on or a step one brake on for a little longer here as I come into the platform. I'll apply a step two for a moment to bring a little more speed off. Now I'm going to try to coast to the end of the platform. That'll do. Arrival at Carntine, platform number one.
leaving Carntine. Our next stop is Belgrove. We have about one and three quarters miles to go to get to Belgrove. That service passing by, by the way, I'm going to try to tell you, that was, I believe, 2H48 also heading for Edinburgh Waverley. Lots of trains heading for Edinburgh today, which is normal. And I know we have a 50 limit coming up here, so I'm going to try to uh, keep that in mind here. I'm not letting the speed go all the way to 60. There's no reason to. Back, we'll hold it right there now. So this is the block. I don't think this bridge exists in the original DLC, but this block is where we re-enter the original suburban Glasgow map that was published in uh, 2021. Of course, the freeware map had all of this together a long time ago before it became a published project. I still intend to show you that as I have a copy of it and the stuff needed to upgrade it. I just... Uh, Obviously not installed right now because I had to uh, redo my hard drive. That was a bit of a hassle. That was almost a year ago now, so long gone memory. And hopefully don't have to do it for another couple at least. So we just passed the signal that protects the uh, line coming from Duke Street in case there's a train on it. Of course there isn't. We have access. They would have to wait for us if there were any. So there's the line from Duke Street just finished joining in. We're going to get our speed down to 30, which I should have done a long time ago now because we're coming up to the platform. There's a crossover line for uh, traffic from Duke Street to come over to this line to make stops on this platform. Those brakes did not want to kick in today. A little bit of an overshoot here. Brakes did not want to kick in. Arrival at Belgrove, platform number one. leaving Belgrove. Our next stop is Glasgow High Street. Again, Glasgow's not in the name, but it is technically part of the name. Just being referred to as High Street because, of course, it's within Glasgow, and it's like referring to Glasgow Queen Street as just Queen Street. Same idea. So we're going to see the line to uh, Shields Junction going off to the left here. I don't believe that line is used by a lot of trains. There used to be a number of stations on that line that are now closed. Um, maybe one time if we get to go down that line, I can talk about the stations that used to be on that line. But all I'll tell you right now is that there used to be trains on the, going down that line all the time to those stations. Now I think it's just mainly for stock movements, maybe the occasional service that's a pass-through service that goes a long way. I don't know. I have to find out more about the um, trains that go through that uh, section and get more information for you at that time. Now stops are going to start getting a little bit tighter at this point. I think the timetable is getting a little, little uh, more challenging to hold at this point. So... There's a good possibility I could have a little bit of a uh, problem getting stops done in the right spot here on time. So anyway, this one's all right. We are stopping at Glasgow High Street, platform number one. Beep. 
leaving High Street, our next stop is Queen Street. Our speed limit is 40 miles per hour, at least through Partick and I think into Annie's Land as well. I think there might be a 30 going towards Annie's Land. So this is a bit of a slower stretch of the railway here. Okay, we're getting close to 40 miles per hour. That is as far as I want to go. I said that's as far as I want to go. Thank you very much. We're on a 1 in 127 downhill gradient. Well, the train coast in now. We should be good for our stop. Want we'll to try and plant this in the right spot here. That will do. Arrival at Glasgow Queen Street, platform number eight. Leaving Glasgow Queen Street. Our next stop is Charing Cross. We continue at a 40 mile per hour speed restriction in this section. As you can see, I took the throttle down to a level one so I can just inch up slowly. We are on flat ground though, so I'm not concerned about any downhill at this time. I think I'm going to stop here at 39.5, a little less than that actually, because uh, I don't see any reason to go up to full speed at this time. We have two minutes to make our stop. We have a very short distance to go. Now it's kind of hard if you drive without the HUD, it's kind of hard to have any kind of a landmark here. You just have to go based on when the tunnel gets lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and do a step two break right now to bring my speed down a little bit. And again, without the HUD, you don't necessarily know what your uh, brake level is either, unless you can read those instruments very, very well. That's one of the challenges of driving without the HUD. I wouldn't do it on I wouldn't like doing it on career scenarios. I may do it on other scenarios though, if especially freight scenarios where there's not a lot going on. One day. Maybe. Anyway, arrival at Sharing Cross platform number two. leaving Charing Cross. Our next stop is Partick, where we started the last scenario. And it's only about two thirds of the way into our journey on this one. All right, so we are up to around our speed limit. I think 40 remains our speed limit until at least very close to Partick, if not all the way in. We're getting a yellow. It's a double yellow, so I have a little time to think about it. 
Not necessarily a bad thing. Arrival time is in two minutes. I hope we're not being held for too long here because we are about two minutes away. That's a single yellow. Okay, we have to get the brakes. That might have been what we were waiting for, actually. We might be okay now. You can see, by the way, the lovely highways in this area. Let's just take just a quick look at it here, and you can see very, very nice modeling of that highway in both directions here. I like that. You can see the building in the distance, too, which I think is some kind of power building. I'm not 100% sure. I looked it up once when I was looking up the night view. So let's zoom in a little bit, take a look at our signal here. We are losing time, so we should be getting a green around the corner here. That's a green, I think. That's a yellow. Never mind, it's a yellow. We're following a train. That's what that means. We are most likely following a train. Or maybe that this could be leading to us having a junction at, one, at some point here as well. Because we do have to take the junction to Annie's Land. So I did put a little bit of power back on, but not all the way to full speed. Is that a train up there? Yeah, that's a train up there. I did not want to come in at this speed, so I'm hitting the brakes quite hard for a moment here. Now, if that was a red at the end of the platform, I would have had an emergency brake applied automatically. So thankfully, it was a double yellow that we were working on. It's a double yellow there now. So we are able to proceed at uh, whatever speed we need to, and hopefully we're on time. So I'm going to pull into fully. If I can get to the end of it, please, quickly. That's where the six-car stop is. I think I'm still on time. We'll find out. Arrival at Partick, platform number two. We're on time, leaving pa Partick. Almost did it again. Our next stop is Hinland. Famous for the Hinland cat, whose name I have now forgotten. And whose owners have moved away and the cat went with them. Was it Hermes? I don't remember. So we are approaching our 40 mile per hour speed limit. You can notice I shut the throttle off and I kind of just turned it back on to hit 40. We do have to make our stop in about 30 seconds. So this will be a very, very quick stop. I never like timings that are at the 40, 45, 50 second point, especially 55. There's a much higher chance you're going to be late for those. So this is not how I'd normally do the brakes, but I have to get the train stopped at the right moment here. I'm actually going to overshoot this slightly. Well, look at that, guys. A little bit of an overshoot. Front car not going to be uh, available on this stop, unfortunately, but the doors are open at Hindland, Hindland. Leaving Hindland, our next stop is Annie's Land. 
We can see that we do not have a uh, yep, red signal up ahead. That's what that repeater board means. We're going to be dropping to a 30, but for right now we can use 40. We have to be at Anisland in two minutes. And we're going to be there at the exact time as it's currently showing up. So I'm a little concerned right now. Especially because I did not do that properly. There we go. There, so there's the uh, path of Jordan Hill going off to the left. And that's the Yoker path. We're going to have a temporary burst up to 40. We may or may not be able to use some of that. I think I'm going to have to try to. Not my normal strategy, but I'm going to have to try to do that. I'm going to have to use some of this. Whoa, that was close. Didn't expect that big a burst of speed there. Okay, now I'm going to hit the brakes a little bit. So taking the brakes off again so we can coast the rest of the way into the platform. Hit our six car stop perfectly. Which you can see is way over at the left end of the platform for some reason. Not sure why it's all the way over there. There we are. Arrival at Anisland, platform number two. Leaving Annie'sland, our next stop is Westerton. We have four stops remaining. This being the first of those four stops, we're going to get our train up to twenty or up to forty miles per hour. The Maryhill line goes off to the uh, right, and there is a station along that line called Kelvin Hall. I believe it's a single line as you go through Kelvin Hall. Murray Hill Line services go from Anniesland to Glasgow Queen Street. We did one of those in my original run of the uh, suburban Glasgow route, in fact. It was one of the actual scenarios. You can also find a scenario I ran out of the workshop that I actually had some inspiration in the creation of. I actually gave a storyline to uh, Green Dragon 32 who uh, made a scenario based on it and uh, also made a 380 version. At some point, I need to come back and run the 380 version of that. But I kind of want to do the um, route that includes the 380 first, which is the Glasgow Airport Rail Link. We have a yellow signal, so we have to make sure our speed is low enough entering the platform. If we do not, an emergency brake will be applied to us. So we need to bring our speed down before the platform at this point. So I'm letting the speed sag a little bit. We only have about a minute to make our stop, but I need to get down to maybe a 10 to 15 as I enter the platform. So not my normal fare. And we have a green signal, of course. Just the way I like to do it. And 
And after all that, we overshoot slightly. Well, there you go. Arrival at Westerton, platform number two. Leaving Westerton, our next stop is Bearsden. We were still on time for that stop, but just barely because we were within the minute at 57 seconds. I'm pushing my speed up to 30 in a hurry, and then we're going, and poetry was not intended there. Uh, there goes the line to Singer off to the uh, left, a little late calling that out, but that's towards Singer, and also heading to the Dalsmer area, the same as the other one through Yoker did. They both meet there. I almost sped, but I caught it. So we are now on the single line to Bearsden and on to Milngavie. This is now the Milngavie branch. We've now hit the 50 mile per hour section. I'm going to go ahead and speed up to 50 miles per hour, which we'll be at briefly because we're going to have to bring it back down for our stop. Not quite at 50, but we're going to get there. I want it. There it is. We have a green signal, so no concerns about reds. You can see the uh, stop after this, uh, which is Hillcott. Or Hillfoot, sorry, Hillfoot. You can also see we got lots of time for this stop, so I'm actually going to start bringing the uh, speed down early for this one. Also, got to like the uh, detail in the branch lines here. I love how this looks. This is lovely. I never, didn't really take a good look at this before, but this is uh, very lovely. Of course, with the trees in the way, that kind of made it a little less lovely, but I didn't mean to slow down that much, so I was actually a little early on those breaks. But we have until 11.13, so we're fine. Once we hit the staircase, I'll put a step two break on. There it is, just a brief step two break. I'm gonna take it right back off. We're gonna take the brakes off fully now to coast towards the end of the platform. There's one last train coming here that you can see. That is the uh, service to Motherwell from Milngavie, as you can see. So uh, arrival at Bearsden, platform number two. Leaving Bearsden, our next stop is Hillfoot, our penultimate stop on the journey today. We are still able to go 50 miles per hour, but we're probably not going to reach that. This is a very, very small stretch, about half a mile or so. Why not? We got to 50. Step two break, please. Like a boss. Look at that. Like a boss. Got up to the full speed and still made it down 25 in time. There you go. That's how you do it. We're going to coast for a moment here. There is a fence indicating where the platform for passengers ends. There is a uh, disused section of platform after that fence. The green marker ends at the end of that, at the beginning of that disused section. You can actually see some of the grass on the platform even right here. So this is where we end our access. And we'll open the doors right here at Hillfoot. I might be slightly late actually. Timeliness penalty of one point. Well, the good news is we don't need all 67 points at the next stop. We only need another 63. 
So we're going to go ahead and take that. We're going to leave Hillfoot. Uh, but second time, we found that this station, the stop, is not easily doable. So uh, the timings on the official scenarios on both the original route and this one, a little iffy about that station. And keep in mind, I came in this time at... Uh, I came in hot on that stop this time. So I basically gave myself the best chance to get the uh, perfect stop on that. Maybe I did coast a little too much coming in at the uh, end of the stop. I should have actually just stopped where I was and I would have been on time, obviously. You don't have to necessarily be on the whole platform, but if you want to be proper, you kind of want to do that. And that's where the extra time comes in handy. So I kind of wish the timing was 11.45 on that one. Or 11, uh, 15, sorry, 11.15 and not 11.14.55. Would have made more sense. Second time that's happened. Ironically, I did a run before this, and uh, I actually made that stop on time. There you go. I even overshot the platform, and I made the stop on time. So it, it can be done. It's just very, very tight. And uh, if it's that tight, it makes it, you question the um, how easy it is to make that stop. We need to get our speed down to 30, so I'm starting to slow down. We want to be down under 10 as we come in the platform. Just trust me on this. When I say we have to be under 10 at the platform, trust me. We're stopping at platform number two. I'm gonna stay at 25 for right now. Normally I would enter the platform at a 25 and I'd be able to stop perfectly fine. But uh, you're gonna see in a moment why we need to get our speed down to 10. And why I'm gonna hit the brakes uh, very quickly before we get to the platform. There we go. Like, even where I am now, 12, this is not enough. You have to get down even lower. So I'm now down to 9, 8. That should be enough for the purpose of that panel that we're crossing right now. If you are even at 12 miles per hour, I think it's over 10. But if you're even at 12 miles per hour, you will have an emergency brake trigger. You will lose some points. Basically, that's how it works. And you also stop very, very early in the platform even though you're already going 12 and it's easy to make a stop from 12 miles per hour. So I think the, um, even though it may be realistic, I don't think it's um, realistic to expect someone to just crawl in. But I guess maybe on the last stop of the journey, that is normal, crawl in. People are gathering their bags anyway, so you don't need to rush them off the train. Maybe that's how it works. So taking a little more speed off here. We're down to under five now. We're gonna actually take it down to two miles per Oh, wait, I need to stop right now. Stop right now, we're gonna be late. Okay, that's good enough. Arrival at Milngivie, platform number two. Let's look at our train. I knew this Milngivie service was going to give me some hassle. I knew it, just starting out, I knew I was gonna have trouble at this end of the route. And sure enough, oh, hello, ma'am. Sure enough, at this end of the route, I did start having a little bit of a hassle. Uh, just reminds me of the other service that we did. I don't remember if it was Springburn or if it just started at um, at Belgrove, but I still remember that it was just as much of a hassle. What can you do? Uh, we don't have an ending message. We're just being told that the scenario is complete. You've completed successfully. So there's no closing message. That's a little off, I think. But we're going to go to our score. That seemed harder than it should have been, guys. Uh, we were on time for that last stop, I believe. No, we were two sec. No, no, it sorry, we were on time. I read it wrong for a second. No, I, again, we can only get the 63 points. So, yeah, I misread that. I was thinking we were late for a second, but we were on time. Everything's good. Uh, by the way, you might be noticing there's no achievements showing up here on underneath the XP. Uh, the actual reason for that is a very simple one. There are none. Uh, the achievements don't exist for this route. This is not an official DTG route, so there are no achievements. Uh, typically, the routes that get achievements tend to be the ones from DTG. So if you have a uh, route from someone else, the achievements typically are not going to show up because DTG is not working on the route. They're simply marketing the route and selling it to play with the game uh, on Steam. So the achievements don't tend to be there. There Maybe in the past there were some cases where that was the case, but nowadays I don't believe they do that because they have a small staff on Train Simulator Classic as it is. So um, I don't know how much of staff, like maybe a few people, uh, the reason I can I can speculate that, it is speculation, 
Uh, but the reason I speculate that is because uh, there's a lot more releases coming for Train Sim World because that's currently the one that has the larger audience. Not necessarily just on PC, but because of the whole console area as well. And because there's so much console uh, play, that's why it has a bigger audience. So I'll be honest with you, if I had a, if I had a, uh, an Xbox or a PlayStation, I'd probably want to play test on those systems, to be honest with you, because that would be something I could do for fun and uh, just be able to uh, run that on that system all day long. I would love to do that on that console and see how it plays there. But um, I don't have that. So uh, I get to play on PC like this game. And I will be playing, by the way, some Train Sim World 3 on this channel. I finally have Train Sim World 3. I have the uh, new routes. I am going to play some Train Sim World 3 for you on this channel. When, I don't know. I still want to try and do one more scenario in this route. It's not taped yet. And uh, I, because of my power outage, I'm probably not going to tape it tonight either. Um, cause I lost a lot of time on that, but, uh, I'm going to figure out what I want to do for Tuesday. It may not be the, um, I kind of want to save for the 70, 75 minute scenario. I want to save that for when we do get the core updates to the game that are suppo supposedly coming out. I don't know if it's next month or later this month or May or June. I don't know when it is. Uh, but they were teased in December. I have a feeling we're going to get them sometime soon, but we'll find out when the time comes. When it's announced, we'll get them. Uh, when that time comes, I will probably want to do the big journey to Helensburg on that version of the route to see how well it holds up. Um, oh, the same version of the route, same route version, but just on the uh, better core to see how it works. So I may save that. I may just do the Class 66 scenario next time because we've seen the Class 66 already. Uh, I'm going to have to see if I can introduce the Class 67 before we come back to it on this route as well. But in the meantime, I'll think about that a little more. I'll decide what I want to do, and you'll see whatever I choose to do. In the meantime, have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever you feet you're part of the world. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. It is free. Hit that bell. You'll know when I post something. And uh, I'll see you next time for more Train Sim Classic. Uh, I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.